Do you know that Samuel Langhorn Clemens was initially in favor of America spreading its influence around the globe for prosperity and helping poor nations learn governance? When he realized that those attempts were conquest rather than the fast he claimed to be, he wrote vehemently against it, especially the American-Philippine War. He said that, I am opposed to having the eagle put its talons on any other land because he knew the consequences of such colonial expansions. We have provided the link of his iconic poem against the Philippine-American War titled The Battle Hymn of the Republic Updated in the description. We are sure you will enjoy it as uh, it was a parody of the original The Battle Hymn of the Republic which was a famous national patriotic poem of America. Hallelujah! Only a few people have heard of it before because Mark Twain's anti-imperialist essays were suppressed by governments and the mainstream media for years. And only about two decades ago were they published. But how many of you would know about the University of Syracuse Press? Not many, right? So, anyways, since you would know about the Justice League or the League of Shadows, you might want to Ecosia, the Anti-Imperialist League as well. You would be enlightened. If one ponders upon the topic, it seems that everything has been shaped by colonialism. The settlement of the North America, the New Zealand, Australia, Brazil, Algeria. From all of this, one question would be that, would Afghanistan or Iraq be considered colonies because the United States did not take its citizens over there to live and work? An important quote uh, in that regards of America's grand strategist Spigniew Bazinski is The mistakes of the Iraq war are not only tactical and strategic, but they are historical. It is essentially a war of colonialism attempted in the post-colonial age. Although most scholarly literature has not been able to make a clear distinction between imperialism and colonialism, the vital thing to know is that the word imperialism started being used more often after the Elizabethans started describing the UK as the British Empire. Imperialism in essence is imposing your will on anyone else in any form. And there are detailed formal studies on the impact of something known as cultural imperialism around the globe. The aspect most affected by it is, who guess? Advertising and marketing. Most of the times, mainly mercantile objectives underlie imperialist and colonial ventures. But we believe and want to make the point that what we see today happening in various parts of the world, Kashmir, Palestine, Xinjiang, Crimea, those practices are contrived from the same practice of oppression. Any form of which, whether in private or public, life is deplorable and ought to be shunned. I and the public know what all school children learn. Those to whom evil is done do evil in return. Western Hugh Auden It does not matter whether one is a student of political science or sociology or an academic in the field of international relations or history. Understanding colonialism is necessary for professionals of every field due to its characteristic of being a worldview. Our contemporary economic and legal systems are based on the colonial past that made the West so opulent and its capitalist system ever so dominant, even after so much criticism from the socialists. Let us quote Vladimir Ilyich Lenin from Imperialism, the Highest Age of Capitalism, published in 1917. 
Capitalism has grown into a world system of colonial oppression and of the financial strangulation of the overwhelming majority of the world's population by only a handful of advanced countries. We all know about the never-ending war between capitalism and socialism and one might say that Lenin was only speaking against colonialism just to demonize capitalism. But that is not entirely true. Of course, Lenin said the capitalist system to be hypocritical and made ample justifications to prove it to someone with an understanding of how modern capitalism has been socialism for the rich and capitalism for the poor. But that is the topic for another video. Here we just want to tell you that Lenin said in this book that the process of production is socialized, i.e. the workers are paid just a little amount of the gains actually made from the entire economic activity. But the means of production and the value added in it is privatized. You scale this up to the international level and you reach capitalism's pinnacle, imperialism. Now whether you like Lenin or not is entirely up to you. Still his theories make a lot of sense. There is this overarching point and a valid one that imperialist ambitions like colonization have proved very destructive to the world. Point out upon it for a while. How did Eric Arthur Blair think of the common man to come under constant observation by superior forces? How did Edward Bernays come for the idea of public relationing for governments and corporations? A series of events spread over hundreds of years of colonialism had taught these thinkers that over time, the means by which the masses were subdued would grow more and more sophisticated. They knew what happened in the colonies. The controlling and monitoring of the telegraph, the radio and other surveillance techniques. They foresaw those practices formulating into fascist processes of subduing the masses at large. The relevance is even more daunting when it is realized that this surveillance system was also used against the own people of the colonizing country. You know, as much as we do, the big brother oversight that we all are living under. As with the Philippines Constabulary, the system of crushing the resistance to the colonial powers by using some of the local power groups is still the way to go about invasion and war for large private interest groups. You simply buy up the warlord, the landlord, the general, the politicians or whoever is in power of the country, mostly third world countries. And then you plunder the country. Just because you are any of these words, Brazil, Colombia, Guatemala, Ghana, Kenya, Honduras, with uh, any of the words from the following. Caterpillar, Chevron, Coca-Cola, Dow Chemical or Dine Corp. All of this is still going on in so many parts of the world. The US was planning to do this with Iran and is still planning to run Palestine like this. Why do you think the economic miracle of Southeast Asia does not have the Philippines in it? The Philippines is still more or less under the same system. The crux of it is that there is no one answer to what colonialism is, as it is just one form in which a powerful system subdues others, including its own population. Adam Smith pointed that out hundreds of years ago. You want to understand how a country works? You should understand how the domestic distribution of power is established. An inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nation describes in details how the merchants and manufacturers are the actual architects of Britain's policy with severe consequences for the Brits. This video leaves behind many questions. The racism, the inequality and the organized violence that we see today all over the world are all direct or an indirect result of colonialism. How is it that international law came to be the servile adjunct to imperial rule? Colonialism caused abject poverty for millions by pushing them into the vicious poverty cycle from which they have not been able to break free from till this day. Was international law not something, historically speaking, 
that generated in this same story of colonialism. Today we see protests like Black Lives Matter or sometimes Occupy Wall Street or some other protests of the sort. But those are scattered protests and not a sustained movement like maybe one of Martin Luther King's or Malcolm X's. If we are to gradually build a better world for us and all our future generations. It is up to us, the people, who have to know the truth and stand up against oppression and injustice in whichever form and at whatever place. Only then can we thrive as a species. Otherwise, even if history won't repeat itself, it most definitely will rhyme. Injustice, anywhere, is a threat to justice, everywhere. Martin Luther King